The Democrats continue to demonstrate how they hate all of us and live in fantasy world. And yet, and yet, there's still the chance that Republicans could blow it in the 2022 midterms. Let me explain. All good stuff to talk about today, and I of course mean all not good stuff because you, me, and everyone with a working mind just got screwed once again. From all the inflation to now us taxpayers paying billions of dollars for those who took gender studies courses in college, we all got screwed with our pants on. And then this little nugget of a comment from our fearless leader. Right now you can't go out and buy an automatic weapon. You can't go out and buy a cannon. And for those brave right-wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America's independent and safe, if you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need something a little more than a gun. No, I'm not joking. Think about this. This rhetoric is nothing new from the great uniter, who has done no uniting up until this point. With unity, we can do great things, important things. We can right wrongs. We can put people to work in good jobs. We can teach our children in safe schools. We can overcome the deadly virus. We can reward, reward work and rebuild the middle class and make health care secure for all. We can deliver racial justice and we can make America once again the leading force for good in the world. Who is this we he is talking about? Now, Joe made a similar comment a year ago in June of 2021 about not getting a cannon. And I might add, the Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited the type of people who could own a gun and what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. Those who say the blood of the the blood of patriots, you know, and all the stuff about how we're going to have to move against the government. Yeah, that's that's about right for him. But what you just saw from the current version of the speech was the sentient version of Biden, the one that got all hopped up on something to get him through the speech. Except the uppers wore off, as evidenced by this confusing ramble. If I can inter just interject for a moment, my deceased son Bo. He was the attorney general of the state of Delaware. And what he used to do is go down in the east side, the, what called the bucket, highest crime rate in the country. There's a place where I used to, I was the only white guy that worked as a lifeguard down in that area, in the east side. And you know where the, you can always tell where the best basketball in the state is and the best basketball in the city is. It's where everybody shows up. Huh? By now, Joe is fully back to his senility self, tucked away with the latest rerun of Gilligan's Island. And the media is doing its usual praise of anything it can grasp as a positive for the administration. Meanwhile, Republicans are doing what exactly to combat, argue, demonstrate, provide evidence of the demise of the Republic? And the answer is, you got me. They should be primed for a tried and true smacking against the Democrats in the midterms. But come November 9th, most logical people may be saying something else. You blew it! The Republicans, based on everything Biden has had a hand in, inflation, 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 and then the Inflation Reduction Act that reduces nothing but brain cells, and the economy just sinking faster than the Titanic, still too soon, the Republicans should have a cakewalk, or an ice cream walk, for that matter. All gotta eat this ice cream. <laughs> But instead, at this moment in time, the Republicans shouldn't be celebrating. New polls are showing that Joe Biden is performing better than he has in quite some time. And that something is a whopping 44% approval. The Gallup poll taken in August showed that Biden's approval rating increased by 6%. And so now the media is pouncing on the progress and making it seem like that percentage is somehow glorious. Over at the New York Times, columnist Charles Blow decided to bloviate about how great Biden is, saying Biden becomes a boon for Democrats. Now, the fact that they are trying to prop, literally and figuratively, a guy at 44% approval as being the coming of Christ is beyond blasphemous. But here we are. As Blow bloviated about Biden, last week he announced that the federal government would forgive billions of dollars of student loan debt. Republicans predictably squawked about it being an unfair giveaway. Progressives complained that the plan didn't go far enough. But Biden did act. He did fulfill his campaign promise to a degree that is crucial. After some major losses on liberal priorities like voter protections and police reform, voters needed more wins. 
It wasn't Biden's fault that his agenda was blocked. For that, the blame goes to obstructionist Republicans and demi Democrats like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. There was, however, a sense setting in that electing an elderly institutionalist meant that he wasn't filled with enough fight, that he was guided by a sort of geriatric gentility. Joe was actually guided and continues to be guided by the greatest doctor of all doctors named Dr. J, who didn't play basketball, Dr. Jill Biden. And it's because of Joe's geriatric gentility. Okay, so I'm going to quickly read Brown Bear, Brown Bear, so you're all not soaking wet. And they're not going to let me read it all. <laughs> I'll let you, here, you can start us off. Can you, oh, here, can I I'll read let backwards? Read the first page. Go ahead. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a bird looking at me. Now you got it. I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> the scientists say... Thank you. <laughs> okay, just stay. She, she's telling me, just sit, don't move. <laughs> she's a teacher. I'm the teacher, you know. She's a teacher. Happy, happy Easter. <laughs> All right. God bless America. Thank you. That right there is but one example of what the Republicans should be compiling for the next two months. Just keep running ads that include the clear picture of senility and lack of cognition. And that transfers over to the rest of the Democratic Party, which is chock full of some of the same senility and or deception. Biden, Pelosi, Schumer, Warren, and the rest of the should-be-retired career politicians are loving what's happening right now because they think they did something beneficial to their pocketbooks. I mean, the people. Gentlemen, do you worry about the future? The Mississippi Mutual Insurance Company. If we had more of those types of politicians, we'd be in a better place. And there is an opportunity for that to happen come November, but only if the Republicans can focus their attention in the proper areas, which they tend to not do. Which brings me to today's question. What will it take for the Republicans to take back control of the House of Representatives and or the Senate in November? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to share this video so those Republican politicians vying for office can use it as inspiration for how to win in November. Because we don't need any more of this nonsense. With just over two months to go before the midterm elections, President Biden had a, a new attack on Republicans during a fundraiser last night. The president said, quote, what we're seeing now is the beginning or the death knell of an extreme MAGA philosophy. It's not just Trump. It's the entire philosophy that underpins the, I'm going to say something, it's like semi-fascism. That's a quote. That's the president of the United States calling half of the country a bunch of semi-fascists. America. Horribly insulting. Uh, he, I mean, the fact that the president would go out and just insult half of America, because uh, effectively half of America has votes Republican, half of America ultimately votes Democrat. You know, it, it swings a little bit one way or the other. But effectively call half of America semi-fascist um, because he's trying to stir up controversy. Um, he's trying to stir up this anti-Republican sentiment right before the election. Um, it's just, it's horribly inappropriate. It's insulting and, and people should be insulted by it and he should apologize. So Dana Bash can't wait to jump in there to try to pin Governor Sununu into saying there's no fascism. Way to divert attention away from, you know, everything that uh, CNN tends to do. And that's what representatives of the Biden administration always try to do, mostly very poorly. Exhibit A. How come migrants are allowed to come into this country unvaccinated, but world-class tennis players are not? Are you you're talking about which world-class tennis player? Novak Djokovic. So, as far, <laughs> you know, just to just since you asked about me about him, yes, me about him. So, visa records are confidential under U.S. law. Uh, therefore, the U.S. government cannot uh, discuss the details of individual visa cases. Uh, due to privacy reasons, the U.S. government also does not comment on medical information of individual travelers as it relates to uh, the tennis, uh, the tennis play, uh, player. Uh, and um, um, thank you, um, and Corrine um, Jean Pierre um, um, for that insight. 
Maybe she can report on these statistics showing that nearly 4.9 million illegal aliens have crossed into the United States since Biden took office. In July alone, it was just shy of 200,000 encounters at the southwest border. If only another 24 would have come on over. So close. She really is clueless. Just read the script that was ill-prepared and hope no one notices. Only Peter Ducey apparently provides her any question that isn't already tested by the team. And whomever is on the Biden comms team really has the worst job because they spend all of their time trying to make Joe Biden seem like he is competent, of which we know he is not. Case in point, the team at precisely 2 p.m. on August 28th, which lets you know this was a prefabricated tweet, wrote in the voice of Joe, I know most families are focused on just putting three meals on the table, taking care of their kids, and paying their bills. Helping you do that is my job. In fact, no, no. <laughs> no, it is not. That is, that is my job as the parent, and you, federal government, need to get out of my way. But if you feel that this is your job, then I have two words for you. You're fired. Yeah. Well, there you have it. If Republicans want to do well in the midterms, they need to focus on how bad Biden is doing. And despite that little clip of Donald Trump saying you're fired, it cannot be about him. So stop blowing it, Republicans. Focus on the nonsense filtering out of Biden's face and attack the detrimental ideas being pushed by the Democrats. Most recently, that is the poof, magical unicorns, money growing on trees, debt relief plan for all those individuals working a job not in the field they studied in college because they chose to take college classes in queer theory, gender studies, diversity, equity, inclusion, and that was just one semester's class schedule. But tell me, dear president, why everyone who paid off college loans or who did not take out college loans to begin with should subsidize those who voluntarily took out those loans. Pray thee. Do tell. But here's the deal. <clears throat> the cost of education beyond high school has gone up significantly. The total cost to attend a public four-year university has tripled, nearly tripled in 40 years. Tripled. So, so it doubled? No, no, wait, it tripled. The fact that it tripled, what does that tell you about the public university system? Instead of properly funding public colleges, many states have cut back their support. We're just talking about that in the Oval. Many states have cut back support for their, their state universities, leaving students to pick up more of the tab. Yes, because they are the ones who willingly went to the university. They supposedly viewed it as a productive debt to incur. All, all this means is the entire, an entire generation is now saddled with unsustainable debt in exchange for an attempt, at least, at a college degree. The burden is so heavy that even if you graduate, you may not have access to the middle-class life that the college degree once provided. Many people, many people can't qualify for a mortgage to buy a home because of the debt they continue to carry. They, uh, you know, they, they, they carry, it's too high, and they can't come up with the down payment anyway. I refer back to my previous comments on gender studies courses. But that's not even the best part. The best part is when Joe went off script telling a long, drawn-out story invoking good old Daddy Biden. I remember walking up, and you now my dad, like probably a lot of your folks, cared a lot about your education. My dad's greatest regret was that he never got to go to college. And my dad was a very well-read man, particularly history, and, uh, um, but it was a great regret. And he always say, Joe, you're going to be a college man. And I say, Dad, but how, well, how, what, what does that matter? I mean, you can still get fired if you're a college man. He says, yeah, but they can never take it away from you. They can never take your education away. Clearly, his education has been taken away, or he just never had it in the first place. And now Joey wants daddy government to swoop in for all of your needs. You know what my dad always says? Don't spend more than you have. Don't spend above your means. And here I am with several college degrees and no debt. So no thank you, Joey. Biden's saying of I forgive you with the ten dollars to $20,000 in debt relief per person is like Michael Scott declaring bankruptcy.